So the, the next national government, presuming mm. there is one after November mm. 26, um, how much further will it change things like that? Will there be more sort of tax switches? Will mm. there be more um, cutting of public expenditure? Mm. I mean, I, I guess we hear from some on the left that you know, this is going to be the most right-wing you know, sort of period um, of reform if National gets back in. Well, of course, that's what they said in yeah, 2009. Exactly, right? and I and think they were wrong. wrong. Yeah. But, yeah. but maybe they're right. No, because I this think time. what you've got in John Key and this National Government is uh, a desire to be incremental, right? Yeah. To actually say, we're not going to do big bang things, and I've given you one, which I say, well, is kind of big bang, yeah. but basically lots of little changes that over yeah. time, when you look back at the top of hill, the hill, have made a big difference. And I, I, I genuinely think we've done that in this first three years term, and I think we can do more of that. Are you going to see some big things? Now, Labor's keen to demonise us on, um, on the mixed ownership model. They say asset sales mm. uh, and some of those things. Yeah, that's a if you like, potentially a big ticket item, although you're talking about seven billion and 200 billion economy. Sure. Um, but I don't think so. I, don't, okay. I wouldn't agree with what you're saying, that it's gonna be these big things. But, but, but I mean, I, I agree with you that the nature of this current government is incrementalist, but the difference between 2008 and 2011 is I think the economic context mm. is potentially much worse. Mm. And we could be going into you know, a continued economic slump, yeah. which might necessitate, at least from the government's point of view, yeah. quite you know, severe sort of austerity measures. What do you think? Yeah, certainly, firstly, you're right to say circumstances, yeah. um, you know, uh, mean everything. Yeah. So if the circumstances are dramatic and, and require um, a certain kind of intervention, well that's true. But I suppose I'm more optimistic than you. I mean I just take the view that when you look around, you look at the UK, Europe, you know, certainly Greece, Spain, etc, etc, yeah. um, they have had really difficult times. They are in for more difficult times I think because years and years of spending more than they've earned are catching up with them. I don't see New Zealand in that same light and we get into you know the credit rating downgrades mm. and all that but I still say actually um, although we might not have thought so a few years ago and we, uh, who was it famously said that agriculture is a sunset industry those things stand us in good stead now and as Asia rises I'm actually quite optimistic, you know, I mean the growth forecast for Asia, what are they, 5-6%, so I don't see us in the light that those other countries are in, I think actually we have a better story ahead of us in the next few years. Okay, optimism. Any other questions or less optimistic people in the audience want to make each other? They're sunny optimists, no, uh, okay. there's one who isn't. Yes. Hi, can I ask you a question? Mm. But what do you think about the national outer fast broadband port law that was recently passed way back in June about the tel telcos right. and other broadband matters amendment bill? Right. Because I during the time when I was watching the debate, how can Labour oppose oppose that outer fast broadband bill or the Greens? Mm, mm. Well, I'm not sure if I'm um, and. You tell me if I've got the question wrong, but you know, in terms of the infrastructure investment and broadband and the changes we've made there, look, I fully agree with them, and I know you'd expect me to say that, but uh, in my electorate, 70 something million going into it. I, I think if you thought about the, the single best government spending that can be done, it's an in infrastructure, right? I firmly believe that. So it is um, roads, rail, broadband, hospitals, and that's where we've spent a chunk load of money. So I agree with that. Okay, which again, in my view, is quite interesting because it shows that you're not the sort of uh, 1990s cut back everything. Mm. Um, you're still a government that's spending quite a fair bit in some respects. Yeah, that's, that's true, yeah. that's true. I mean, and I think you're right to say it's a moderate government. Yeah, I mean it's not. It's not moderate in most areas, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> what are some where we're not? Uh, I guess in terms of. Uh, Sorry, I'm interviewing you yes. now. <laughs> 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 fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, you know, actually, no, unless you want to. Ask. No, no, no. Actually, you're talking about internet, and that just made me think. Um, you're not on Twitter, are you? No. Um, no. You, what, you seem like this uh, young rising star. I'm, but you're, um, you're I'm scared of it. I'm yeah? scared of it. No, I, uh, 
So I am definitely into Facebook in a big way. Like I'm on Facebook several times a day. What do you do? Um, I find Facebook safer somehow, right? So I'm being really, I, I feel like I should be paying you and I should be on a long leather couch here or something. But, um, <laughs> it, it is, uh, Facebook somehow I find more controlled. You're able to have conversations. Twitter, I'll be frank, I've never been on it. It seems to me like it's this big uncontrolled universe. Oh, this is sad for a 35 year old to be saying this, but maybe sometime I'll enter into the word of the Twitter sphere. But I mean, you've seen this week actually um, with uh, Andrew Little and, yes. uh, and, and other examples how these things can go wrong. I actually think Facebook is more controlled. You, see, you, you know the person often. Mm -hmm. um, for me, actually, that is very much a Tauranga fo focused thing. Okay. And that gives it a more community controlled feeling. Okay, so. Twitter may come. Okay, Twitter may come. So you. On Facebook, is it just you putting press releases on, or are you interacting? Are you oh, no, sometimes, um, no, look, sometimes we have a real laugh. I mean, so you know, I'm, uh, and sometimes it's, um, you know, it's 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 idle kind of jokes and, and quotes and, and that sort of thing. I mean, obviously, the last fortnight, actually, I've deliberately, and it's a bit like coming here today, right? But for the last two weeks, literally, I haven't posted anything other than about Rena and, and that situation. I just thought, you know, it's not a time. But you're given the serious issues okay. in my electorate to be doing something else. But there's room for fun as well. Okay. This question from the Twitter sphere. Um, why was compulsory student unionism bad when compulsory KiwiSaver is good? I thought compulsion was evil to you guys. Uh, well, firstly, <laughs> he or she is wrong to say compulsory KiwiSaver because, of course, it's opt-in. So it's a nudge, not a, not a compulsion. But look, I, I, I'll be frank, and I know this is, you know, uh, in this electorate, the, the, the votes are going down, say the worm is turning badly for me. I'm leaving my cloud on limb. But look, I absolutely um, support VSM. I always have. I've only gone twice to a select committee as a non-MP. The first one was as a student on VSM because I believed in choice, uh, and the other one was on the Electoral Finance Act, whereas a, um, a, a lawyer, um, you know, I thought it was breaching some pretty fundamental constitutional issues. There was another question as well about your opinion on the search and surveillance. Mm. If you want to say something about mm. that for the person who asked it. Yeah, I, look, I, I do have fears at a general level. I think we have to be very careful as a society about our freedoms <coughs> and our liberties. So, I, you know, I wouldn't want to see us be pushing out the boat too much on search and surveillance. It is something I, you know, as I say, I have fears about. I think if you look overseas, the UK, um, the CCTVs everywhere, you can't go anywhere without being looked at by someone, right? And I don't want to go down that road. But actually, the bill that came out of Select Committee on Search and Surveillance, I think, I mean, it's the word of the day maybe, but it's a reasonably moderate sort of a situation where we're, we're doing some things and some tweaks that needed to be done. We're systematising the area of law, but we're not pushing the barrel out too far. Okay. So, gazing into the crystal ball, where are you going in life? Where are you going in, in politics? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, well, my uh, wife is having a baby in March, so that'll okay. be good. And that's um, your that'll third change one? things. No, first. 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 I, I have two dogs, so that's. Two dogs? <laughs> yes, I read somewhere you've got two kids. That's, okay. uh, and they are like children, but okay. they. Um, uh, yeah, look, politically. Um, you know, who, who, who can tell, obviously. Well, but people say, people, some people say they can tell, and then you're going to be a future leader, or you're at least going to be in Cabinet next, next year. Oh, um, here's hoping, man. Yeah. Here's hoping. Um, so what do you want in, uh, as a ministerial portfolio? Well, you know, a lot, lot of people, when you ask them that question, MPs, they'll get all cute, you know, and they say, yeah. you know... Oh, so, whatever I can take. Yeah, and I just want to be the MP for Tauranga. I think I've oh, heard, heard that, that one before, before and all that yeah. sort of thing. Look, no, I, I'm... Happy to say, look, I'm ambitious, right? Actually, um, I, I know that the way you can affect greater change isn't as a backbench MP, although you can do some good things. And actually, to, to, to pick someone on the other side, Sue Bradford showed that, you know, through members' bills, you can do quite a bit, right? Sure. But personally, you know, where do I think you can affect the greatest change? It's the higher you go, and Cabinet's the place to okay. be. Okay, I mean, there is an I predict um, stock, isn't there, um, on you becoming. Attorney General, or what is it, or Minister of Justice? I think it is actually. Uh, Justice, yeah. Justice. Um, look, I'd take it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd take it. <laughs> if John Key is watching right now, barrel to camera. <laughs> I would take it. Okay. Right, gratefully. Okay, so you're up to it. Um, look, obviously, there's a range of people that are up to it, and I'm yeah. not trying to be political, but you've got a number of lawyers in our caucus. I think who could do a good job. Could I do a good job? Yeah, I think I could. Okay, well, any other portfolios, or is that the best one? 
Um, for you? Look, I actually, uh, and this may not come through in my background, but maybe it come through in some of the things we've talked about. I have a real interest in social policy. Okay. So, um, so you, Paula you, Bennett, watch out. No, no, not so much necessarily, but I would interpret that quite broadly. You know, I think there's a range of um, portfolios and areas where you can make a real difference socially. Okay, we've got another question from the audience. Just say, for example, they did make you Minister of Social Welfare. Mm. Um, and you were talking about how... I wouldn't put money on, I predict on that, by the way. Okay, <laughs> I've never been on the site. <laughs> right. um, and uh, you're talking about how in the 90s you can't think of anything that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just to go along with that theme, mm. how would you do things different? There was a lot of talk about dependency, welfare dependency, mm. single mothers, mm. you know, destroying the economy mm. and stuff mm. like mm. that. Mm. How would you approach that? Well, well, firstly, I suppose you could say, well, the language was wrong, right? And that's probably a superficial political point. Um, but, you, you know, arguably in the 90s, whilst the substance I don't necessarily disagree with, the way it was done, the language used, the alienation of certain groups maybe was there, right? And remember what I'm talking about, although I was a member of the National Party, mm. 15, 16 year old. Um, the other thing I think you could make the argument um, is that, look, the pace of change, it goes back, back, back a bit to our point about incrementalism, the pace of change, mother of all budgets and so on, was pretty sort of, mm. you know, um, shock and awe really, mm. right? And I think we would say today, actually, you are better to be incremental. Give people a chance to, you know, if they're on welfare, get into work schemes, do things at a slower pace rather than sort of tomorrow it's over. So I think those probably are some, when I think about, and I think about your question, some lessons from the 90s. But, you know, I. I, I also say on the other side of that you do judge a society um, by how many vulnerable it creates. We have gone from 3% to whatever it is, 12, 13% of our adult working population who aren't in work. That is too high and that's not good for the taxpayer, it's not good for the government, it's actually not good for them. You know, So um, how you get to change is I accept a really contestable kind of a a thing, but should we, for the good of actually all New Zealanders, get change, have less welfare? Yeah, we should. I have a question. Um, the last few MPs we've had on Vote Chat, they've all seemed to have politics degrees, and yourself included. Mm -hmm. But do you think that, because obviously, like you know, a few decades ago, mm. the face of Parliament was more you know, teachers, yeah. agriculturalists. Things. Yeah. Do you think that Parliament is different, and do you think politics degrees are actually useful? in terms of representing the... the <laughs> I'm positive. sorry to say it, Bryce, but, um, <laughs> you, you know, it's funny. If you go to UK, it's awful, right? Everyone has, I forget what it is, but it's a PPE or something, politics, philosophy, <laughs> whatever it is, from Oxford or Cambridge, right? That's sad. That's all they have, right? They do that, they go and become a researcher, and then they're a member of parliament for wherever, right? Um, so I, I don't like that, even though, you know, arguably to some extent I'm a bit like that. But what I would say is I've got eight years in the middle where I was working um, as a criminal lawyer, really. Um, so that's a difference. So to answer your question, you know what, if I did it all again, I loved the politics degree and actually I don't know if this is good or bad, but I, I, want, I didn't want to be a lawyer but my dad made me, but I would have carried on with politics and probably done a PhD and been sort of a, a left-wing academic or something. Okay, well, then let's, <laughs> let's finish the, we can finish the interview here. But the point is let's I wish I did point. commerce, not arts. Right. Oh, it would have been more, would have been more <laughs> practical. Okay, now with all of our victims, sorry not victims, uh, guests that come on here. Uh,